see you. How you doing? Good to see you. We have access to any of this uh, footage afterwards.
How's it going? Good. I'm going to shoot some photos from over there. I've got, I'm with uh, Alex Pascal. Um, I just was going to make sure it was okay with if I had a flash on and all that. So, Okay. And let me give you my card. He said this would be available. You guys are going to make it available later? Oh, okay. Well, here's my card. Oh, anyway, my email. Email. Yeah, just send me a link. Okay. I appreciate it. And your name is? Uh, Kimmel. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you much. One more question. That little tripod right there, does that belong to the church? Oh, okay. So I was gonna, we've got ours on that little tripod. I was gonna ask if I could stick you on something. Yeah, I'll offer it. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. January 23, and our mission is to work for the transformation of people, community, faith-based organization, relationship. education is one of the keys to our organization, so we're asking you to be Cognizant of today is the National Voters Registration. <clears throat> that is one of our rights as citizens of this United States, so we do not take that lightly. So that's why we're here to show that we do not take it lightly. I would like for all the members of the committee to stand so that you would know who these committee members are. Thank you. We have been working diligently trying to make sure to educate our citizens on voting. So that's why we're having this forum, so that you can share with the community what your views are, how you can move it forward. So we're looking to hear from you. As we look, as we move forward, and the members of this forum, we're praying that we will have Minister 
Destiny Hill to come and do our Pledge of Allegiance. Let us stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Minister Hill. Pastor Wayne, we would like you to come in for our invocation. Pastor Wayne. All right, amen. Amen. Thank you for all of you, all of the candidates, for being here on this afternoon. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. It's our custom. Let's stand. Let's all stand. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for being back in the sanctuary again. Father, we thank you for being back in your presence, God, because it's no matter where we are, what we do. Father, we are always in your presence. Father, we thank you for everyone who is here. We thank you for this candidate voting forum on tonight. And Father, we just thank you for, for the faith-based committee. We thank you for each and every candidate that is here. And Father, we thank you because we know that you know all things. You see all things. And God, we know that you got this election under control. Yes. So Father, we stand in anticipation and waiting, God, for everything that we've been praying to manifest before us. Father, we thank you for the faith and the hope, God, that we have, Father, in you because we know, God, that you are going to make all things well. Father, we thank you, God, for every candidate who is here. And Father, I pray your anointing and your blessings over their life. I pray health and peace over their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you will give them the energy, God, and the stamina, God. Give them what they need, God, to win, God, whatever um, seat they are up against. Father, we just thank you for every, every question that's going to be asked tonight. Father, we say, God, send your kind of glory in the room. Father, we thank you, God, and we know, God, that you are here, Father, and we just give your name the praise still, and we give your name the glory, because you are the God of the heavens, and you see all things, and you know all things. Father, we thank you for what's getting ready to be said through lips of clay today, and Father, we just thank you. We honor your name, God. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor. I have this awesome task to present to you and to introduce to some our moderator for the evening. She's a busy lady. Dr. Hardy, Dr. Virginia Hardy was formerly the Vice President and Chief Inclusive and Belonging Officer at ECU Health Medical Center. She formerly served as the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs at ECU, East Carolina University. <laughs> All right, got some pirates in the house. She has over 30 years of experience in education and as a teacher, as an administrator, and additional expertise as a counselor. Dr. Hardy also previously served as a senior associate dean for the academic affairs at Brody School of Medicine, an intern chief diversity officer. Before joining ECU, Dr. Hardy was a teacher and assistant principal at Welcome Middle School. I told you she's a busy lady. <laughs> Dr. Hardy served as a member of the board of trustees at Pitt Community College. She's board chair for the Horizon of Pitt County and board member of Town Bank. That just among all the other civic duties that she's involved in. Dr. Hardy has degrees from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, 
East Carolina University, North Carolina State University. And she credited all of this to her parents, her siblings, for their undying support, their encouraging, empowering, because they were there when she was on that dirt road down in St. Peter. <laughs> So I remember that. <laughs> so without further ado, and she will direct us from here forth, our moderator, Dr. Virginia Hardy. <laughs> And there will be no judgment. <laughs> okay? Thank you. <laughs> I have embraced that. I used to be ashamed of being embarrassed, but I have embraced that. It is okay. All right. And um, so we're going to get started um, with um, some conversation. Come on in. Representative Smith, come on in. You've got a spot just for you. <laughs> So we welcome all of you to this very important candidate forum sponsored by the Pitt County Faith-Based Committee. Um, we are excited and we thank you to the committee members for putting this important conversation together. We're here with our candidates who are running for local and statewide offices, each of you eager to share your visions, your ideas, and so your solutions on the issues that matter most to our community. Now, as citizens, we have a responsibility to participate in the democratic process, and forums like this are a critical part of that process. These forums allow us to hear directly from those who seek to represent us, giving us the chance to ask questions, evaluate their positions, and as President Franklin Roosevelt once said, let us, for, let us never forget that government is ourselves and not an alien power over us. Okay? We are the ones who will dictate um, what our democracy will be. I encourage each of you to please listen seriously, listen carefully to what the candidates have to say, and take this chance for you to get informed. Voting is not just a right, it is a duty and a responsibility. It is essential that we make all make informed decisions based on facts, values, and vision. Thank you again for joining us to you all and, of course, to our candidates. And a quick reminder that the goal of this forum is to have a respectful and productive exchange of ideas. Our rules of engagement, which have been shared with you for this evening, really um, help us to um, guide us to make sure we're having that conversation. We're asking you to be respectful, engage in civility, uh, manage your time, which we'll talk about in a second, stay on topic. If you're going to go off tangentially, as I call it sometimes, that rabbit hole, I'm going to pull you back from the rabbit hole, right? If it's something that's relevant to the topic, cool beans, go ahead, but otherwise, let's stay on topic. We want, you, we want all of you, our audience, as well as our candidates, to have active listening, to hear what each other is saying. We're going to have equal participation. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to have time to speak. Um, we're going to have audience engagement. We're going to, we need you to be factual and accurate, right? Now, unfortunately, we don't have anybody back here to fact check you, and this is just made majorly egregious, right? Then we're going to have to let you know. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to have conclu concluding remarks and understand, and then some of you are wondering <coughs> if I sound like or look like someone. Yes, that is my sister. And so uh, my older sister, as she likes to say, because I'm the youngest, and she says, um, you know, birth order matters. So whatever. But because, but in this place right now, as the moderator, I have authority. Yeah. All right. And so I will be moderating, and, and when need be, um, 
helping to move the conversation along. So what we're going to do is we're going to give each candidate two, one to two minutes to introduce yourself very briefly. You don't have to go into your, your platform because we're going to ask those questions. But briefly, um, just um, introduce yourself. And then we're going to ask you questions. You will have two minutes to respond to the questions. If there are some relevant follow-up questions, we'll do those. And then at the end, we're going to have one minute where you can do closing remarks. All right? And um, and um, see, <laughs> <laughs> we will have someone somewhere right here. Thank you. Who will hold up the cards, if you would please, to let you know when you have two minutes remaining on your five. And I'm sorry, you will have 90 seconds for your response. Did I get that right? That's right. Yeah, 90 seconds. You gotta be concise. <laughs> That's just like, what? They like, really? Okay. We'll give you some opportunities. We'll have opportunities in there to be to do what you need. Okay? So uh, pay attention for the signs. We're going to also ask everyone to please um, either mute your phone or to vibrate or turn off your phone. Um, you'll see me looking at mine periodically, but that's also because I'm trying to um, make sure that I am following my directives and keeping us um, on time. Okay? Everybody ready? Okay. Well, we're going to get started. So we have um, representatives um, here. So we're going to start. Um, instead of starting on this front row, which is what we normally would do, we're going to start on the back. And Justin, I think it is, right? Justin, we're going to, if you would, introduce yourself, please. If there's a microphone, just, you know, we're going to. Each row has a microphone. Oh. <laughs> each, each row has a microphone, Dasha, so there should be one. Yep. <laughs> check, check. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, thank you, Amazing Grace, for hosting this and uh, getting us all together. My name is Justin Eastwood. I'm running for District 4 in the school board. Um, I'm 36 years old. I've been a part of District 4 my whole life. Uh, I was born and raised in Farmville, graduate of Sud Bundy. Uh, Farm Middle, Farm Central. My kids go there. I have four kids there. Actually, one just graduated. She just started uh, college. So my life has been turned upside down. Uh, but I still have three in the District 4 schools, and, and that's why I'm doing this. Uh, I feel like the past couple years, parents have had, I don't want to say a deaf ear in District 4, um, but I feel that way myself because I've, I've had some of those conversations. So in my mind, it's time for parents to have somebody who actually listens to them and takes it to the board that way. Personally, I don't think you can go wrong voting for me or Ms. Desha in District 4. I think either way, it's going to be a positive influence compared to what it has been. So there's that. Uh, basically, my biggest thing is I want teachers to have somebody to listen to them so we can keep teachers in our school. I want kids to have somebody listen to them so we can keep the kids in public schools instead of everybody going home school. Um, but other than that, I'm just a, I'm just a local blue collar worker. I'm new to all this. I'm not a politician. It's my first time talking in front of people like this. Uh, but that's me. Uh, I'm wide open. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. But like I said, I appreciate y'all hosting this, and I'm glad we're all here. So. Thank you, Justin. John, go back for your first time. All right. Um, thank you to the Faith-Based Committee. Thank you, Pastor Wayne, for letting us here and um, join this fellowship together. My name's Erin Kessel, and I'm running for District 6. That is the Aiden and Grifton area. It also includes D.H. Conley. Um, I was a Pitt County school teacher for 12 years. I taught in the elementary school as well as the middle school. Um, I worked through being a fourth grade teacher all the way up to a multi-classroom teacher where I mentored teachers. And then I took a role at ECU, where now I am an instructor in the College of Education. And I work with our pre-service teachers, so our next generation of teachers. Um, and I take them out into the schools. I give them the opportunity to do their practice out there. And it is great, because I get to pick, pick county schools and get to take them and prove how amazing our schools really are so that we can keep our next generation of teachers um, recruit and retain is a big philosophy of Pitt County Schools, and that is one of our goals. 
My husband is a high school science teacher at Aiden Grifton, as well as a girls basketball coach out there. Um, he lives and breathes Charger Pride out there, and he will probably stay in those four walls his entire life. Um, he is just happy as a clam. I have two children in Pitt County schools. I have a kindergartner as well as a sixth grader, um, and I truly believe in public education. I truly believe that my children need to work with all children because when they get into the workforce one day, you're working with all people. We need to know that it is equal partnership when we're working with everybody and that we need to be able to um, work together and build a community. So I feel like I have a very strong lens into the education world and I would like to make sure I continue to advocate for my teachers, for the students, as well as particularly our community out there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I will echo the thanks for bringing us all together today. Uh, my name is Jennifer Matthews, and I am running for Board of Education in District 9. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, that is uh, Grimes, Lynn Simpson, Pactolis, um, and parts of Eastern Pines and Chicago area. Um, and I have three children um, in the public school system. Um, I, I say this everywhere, but my last one started kindergarten this year, and they're all in the same school, so if you know, you know how important that is. <laughs> um, so, and my husband is a, a high school social studies teacher out of uh, Chicago, at Conley. Um, and he also uh, is a golf, the girls' golf coach out there this year. Um, so I uh, am a professor out at ECU in the Department of Health, Education, and Promotion, where I do a lot of uh, research in substance use prevention. Um, and in spe specifically what I focus on is looking at adverse childhood experiences, trauma, and adversity, and how that impacts substance use, um, and really trying to build our communities to be more resilient and um, trauma-informed. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and it's really important to me um, that uh, we have the opportunity to engage families back into our public school system. I think that what we've seen is a really big separation between the schools and families, and there's a lot that we can do to help bridge that. Um, I'm also not a politician. I am really just a mom um, who's just trying to make things better for my kids as they start on their public health or on their uh, public education journey. Um, being a product of public education, I think that it's really an important investment for our community. So um, that, that's my goal in, in running the school board. Um, good evening, and um, I appreciate the invitation tonight and this forum um, and your engagement in politics, uh, all of you coming out tonight. So that's amazing. Uh, my name is Amanda Klein. I am running for Pitt County School Board in District 8. That includes CMFs, Walcoats, Eastern Elementary, and Innovation Early College High School. Um, like these two, I am also a professor at ECU. I came here uh, 17 years ago, and uh, I am very proud to be a member of the Greenville community. Uh, I have tried to, in my time here, give back as much as I can. Uh, I've been a Meals on Wheels driver for three years. I have been a part of my children's PTA, and I see running for school board as an extension of that community service. Um, I also have two children who, um, well, one is now out, like yours. She's, she's at Chapel Hill, so woo! Um, and my, my son uh, just started at Rose, but he was in Epps last year. Um, if and when I am elected, I am running unopposed, but uh, when I am elected uh, to school board, uh, my top priority will be uh, teacher recruitment and retention. Um, we do have a crisis in staffing right now, and um, I have a lot of ideas for how to do that, but I think a big one is showing our public school teachers how important they are and yeah. treating them as the professionals that they are um, and getting them salaries that are commensurate with, honestly, just a... Um, a normal way of living because yeah. right now it's it's pretty untenable. So um, again, thank you for having me, and I'll I'll end early. So there you go. So it looks like the uh, it looks like the back two rows are the school board folks. Okay, we all just congregated together. I love it. Go ahead, Dr. Swinker. Good evening, and thank you for having us here. Uh, my name is Marion Swinker. 
and I'm running for Pitt County Soil and Water Conservation District Board of Supervisors. I've been a resident of Pitt County for 30 years and for the last 22 have lived out in the country west of Winterville. Um, my background, I'm trained as a physician, retired from Brody School of Medicine. Uh, my specialty was occupational and environmental medicine. Uh, so I know a fair amount about the environment and how it impacts health and, and life. Um, I also have experience dealing with federal and state agencies. Um, I've served as Commissioner for Public Health in West Virginia for several years. I was on the uh, North Carolina Public Health Commission for eight years. Uh, I've had to interface with inspectors from federal and state agencies in my job at ECU, which was administrative and overseeing some of the health and safety programs for the employees. Uh, I also understand about grants and how money flows from the feds to the states to the counties and the need for uh, oversight and control of, of those monies. Uh, my heart belongs to nature and the environment. I really care about the environment and believe that we need to use our natural resources to live, but that we need to use those resources wisely so they support us and so they support future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sinclair. Okay. Um, my name is Desha Lane. I am um, running for um, District 4 School Board, Board of Education. I am um, from Formal, myself, uh, Pitt County area, uh, born and raised. I am also a graduate of Formal Central uh, High School. Uh, yeah, go Jaguars. I won't uh, say how old I am, but um, I didn't go. It was uh, separate schools. It was H.B. Suds. It was Sam D. Bundy, then H.B. Suds. Then, so you, you know, don't you? <laughs> um, so I attended those schools, and the Falkland is also um, part of our district as well, Falkland, uh, Falkland schools. Um, I am. I have one daughter who also attended um, Pitt County schools. I wanted her to be a Jaguar, but she refused. But she is a graduate of J.H. Rose High School. Um, she, uh, I heard hear a lot about the Tar Heels. She is a 2023 graduate of UNC Chapel Hill and is currently pursuing her master in social work with North Carolina Central University. She started about three weeks ago. So I'm very, very proud of her. Um, my work in the public school system has been uh, partnering uh, with the school systems to create programs, prevention programs, such as uh, bully prevention. Uh, through the Pitt County Sheriff's Office, I worked there 16 and a half years prior to my current role as a nonprofit executive director. But I was able to implement um, gun accident prevention programs and things of that nature. A lot of my um, experience has been working with um, ju juveniles considered at risk. So just putting prevention uh, programs in place and providing resources for families, parent family skill building, um, life skills programs and things like that for those types of, for, for the teens um, involved in juvenile justice has been a lot of my work, um, especially coming um, out of the sheriff's office for, like I said, 16 and a half years. Um, I'm interested, uh, for the last two years, I've been able to um, partner with Pitt County Schools with an alternative to prevention, excuse me, alternative to suspension programs. So that is something that I'm concerned about, is student suspension, as well as student mental health um, and parent engagement, want to increase parent engagement. So um, again, thank you for having me, and my time is up. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Good. You know what happens when you give a pastor a <laughs> Let me see you all. Bishop Cliff, do not make me do it. Good evening. My name is I'm the pastor of the Holland Hill Regional Free Baptist Church there in the beautiful spot of Bellevue. Y'all know where that's at. Yeah. I'm running for realization on the Board of Education. I serve District 3 which consists of six schools north of the river. And my goal has continued to be to, to get the best teachers we can for our students and to also to get parent engagement. And school security is one of my priorities. Yes. Uh, my second year on the board, I served as chair. And I learned a lot from serving as chair. And it's still a continuous learning 
uh, process. Uh, Pitt County School does a great job in teaching our children, and they have an awesome responsibility. I did not know until getting on the board that they do so many things to help educate our children. My daughter, my wife, both graduates of North Pitt. I have a granddaughter who's at Lake Forest. A grandson who I had to pick up and take home is a sophomore at Farmer Central. Amen. So I'm not going to hold it against him. He was like graduated from Green Central. Thank you. Retired Chief Deputy under the leadership of Sheriff Mike Manning. Man, I, go there. Yes, I just want y'all to know there's a lot of body heat up here. <laughs> My name is Matt Manning, and uh, I'm running for County Commissioner in District C, which encompasses the Falcon and Baltimore Fountain area, as well as Bell Arthur and Wonderful Aiden and South, Little South of Greenville. Um, I came to Pitt County uh, in 1980, uh, 1978 as a student at East Carolina University, and as my last semester, I was required to do a field placement. And East Carolina placed me at the Pitt County Sheriff's Office. And uh, it took them 30 years to run me away. <laughs> um, but it was a great career. And I served 12 of those years as sheriff. And I got to work with some really fine people, two of which are representative here on the state. And uh, people talk about, they say, well, you did a good job, or you were a great sheriff. I said, no, I had people that made me look good. Yeah. Um, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my purpose, I, I can't say that I have an agenda per se, more of a general thing, a, agenda running for county commissioner. That is to be a good steward of our tax dollars and to be a good manager of our resources. And our number one resource is our personnel. And those are the people that when I was sheriff, that I was constantly fighting for to get them to pay and the benefits that I thought they deserved. Because if, if we don't have, if we're not treating our employees well, what we can't expect them to produce. And so that's, that's an important part. And I'm also going to be a listener and I'm at zero. <laughs> Bishop, Bishop. Bishop. I know Bishop. Thank y'all. The high sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Hi, my name is Bob. Bob Edwards. I'm happy to be here tonight, and thanks for the chance to let us all come and get better acquainted. Um, it was mentioned that uh, you know, if you give a pastor a microphone, same could be be said for retired college professors. <laughs> it's, it's, it's terrifyingly easy after 30 years of that to talk for 50 or 75 minutes about whatever, but I won't do that to you. Um, I was born and raised in California, on, on the central coast of California, um, into a family of public school teachers for the most part. Um, I went through and graduated from the community college in my hometown. And then, to make a very long story short, I moved to Chicago to continue my education in, with the intention of pursuing a career in the ministry. To shorten the story, let's just say that that didn't work out in, in a long run. Um, I ended up meeting my wife, Terry, there as a student. And we moved to Washington, D.C., where I um, had a lot of jobs that I probably couldn't even convince my own mom or had enough in common to be a first career. I worked as a community organizer for an organization in Arlington, Virginia, much like the Green Lab organization here. I worked for the county housing office. I was a carpenter. Uh, you probably not believe it, but I was actually, for a while, a bicycle courier. And then finally, in my 30s, went back to graduate school and started a career at ECU at 37. And I've been there 
was there for 29 years and retired in July. So I'm, we've lived here all this time. Our kids went K through NC State, through NC Pub, through North Carolina Public Schools. And I'm running um, to get back to the community we've chosen to stay in and to work to improve the quality of life for all people in Pitt County, in all parts of Pitt County. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, the minor details. Uh, uh, Pitt County Commission District B, uh, which includes Greenville from basically County Home Road to the river, and then goes down 33 all the way to Grimesland, and then back across through Blunt, Jack Simpson, Chicago, Swift Creek, and all the way to Grifton. Okay. All right, thank you. Commissioner very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just thank uh, the pastor of this church for your kind words and your warm welcome. My name is Melvin McLaughlin. I've been a county commissioner probably as long as some of you have been born. Uh, <laughs> uh, about 14, 16 years to be able to back. And uh, I'm, I'm running unopposed. Now, some people say, well, you're lucky. But I say I'm blessed. That's right. I, I'm blessed. And I have to say that because I'm in church. Too. That's right. <laughs> but I'm blessed because uh, I think the number one uh, objective for any county kind of commissioner or any, any, any public servant is to be honest and to be truthful with their constituents. Mm -hmm. Say you're going to do something, do it. That's right. If you can't do it, tell them. And, uh, and, and and move forward, but move forward with a principle, a principle of efforts. Now, someone asked what, what you think is the biggest issues of the county. Uh, your, my constituents have different issues. So what is your big issue is my concern. Whatever is the issue for you is my issue. Look, now, we're talking right now about the possibility of Glen safety. That's a big issue. And uh, certainly, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a gun carrier. I have a permit to carry a gun, but there is a safety element in it. So you can't be shooting uh, around the various territory uh, in, in people's backyards. You have to be safe. So we are, we are right now looking for policy to implement that. Uh, now, my district, District A, is the, what we call a super district. It consists of all the northern part of Pitt County, as well as uh, uh, East Carolina University, a little bit of that. And uh, at Eastern, I, I hear the bell. You last year, Jennifer, you did not follow the model. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank and you, sir. Thanks for continuing to uh, look to the youth. There we go. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. Um, my name is Borstein Brown. I live in Bethel, and I currently serve in the North Carolina House. I serve in uh, District 8, which uh, consists of uh, Bethel, Bell Wharf, Pat Tulls, not Pat Tulls, Falkland Fountain, Farmville, Green, West Greenville, a little bit of Whittleville, Bell Author. <laughs> uh, but I have, uh, this is my first term in the House. I it was currently the mayor in Bethel. And I have been in politics altogether, all if you look at it, about 25 years. I started in 99 as a town commissioner. Um, I am married. I have two adult children, three grandchildren. Um, and so I, my, as I t always tell everybody, I, I became, I don't consider myself, it depends on what your definition is for politician. Because I, you know, I, I, I'm just a servant. I'm here to serve and here to see the needs and the things that are needed within my district, within my county. And I started out being nosy uh, back in 99 and got elected and still been running ever since and trying and serving on different capacities of boards and all. But I tell you one thing, I tell people up in Raleigh that it is like drinking water out of a fire hose. It's a lot different. The play is a lot different. 
but that's okay. I'm here to learn. I want to continue to ask God to keep me humble, and I'm going to do what I need to do in order to serve the people that God had put me in place to serve. And I forgot to say thank you to the to the shepherd of this house. Thank you for the committee, for everyone that having us here on this evening. And just to let you know, if you see me tiptoe, I'm not being disrespectful and not feeling that well, but I'm going to do my best to hang in here. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Claire Kemper. Um, I'm running for North Carolina State House District 9. My three-year-old won't remember this election cycle, but one day when she asks me what I did to protect her freedoms, her freedom to vote, her freedom to attend a fully funded public school, her freedom to make decisions about her own body. I'll be able to tell her that I did everything I could. Um, I'm a mom, um, I'm a wife. I've worked behind the scenes on state legislative and municipal campaigns since 2018, and I've advocated for common sense gun safety laws with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Uh, running for office was something I said I would never do, um, but you know what they say about saying never. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, there's just so much at stake in this election. There really is. Our basic personal freedoms are on the ballot. Um, and I hope to earn your vote. And thank you so much. Again, my name is Claire Kempner, running for NC House, State House 9, and thank you very much for holding this forum. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for holding this forum. I think it's important to make sure that people are educated and not just expect people to vote without knowing who's running to represent. I am Candy Smith, your current sitting um, senator for Senate District 5. I represent all of Pitt County and all of Edgecombe County. I am a very dedicated community advocate and leader, and I have been since I moved to Greenville. Um, I am known to not take no for an answer and to look into issues um, for all constituents. I don't just represent um, people who are in my district. I represent all of North Carolina. Um, I believe in making sure that we do take care of our public schools. I think we have issues when we decide to cipher money from the schools to put it into the private schools. Now, if it was all over 100 counties, it would be probably not as bad if we were getting money from Leandro. But most people don't know that this money is only going to 10 counties. And so in order to put $488 more million that we just passed into 10 counties alone, it's a sad day. But we can't give up and we must continue to fight. Um, in order to when I think about someone trying to tell me what I can do with my body and all those young ladies who are coming behind me, that is an issue because it's between them, their God, and their doctor. And it's not for the government to be in their business. Uh, when I hear the regressive laws of trying to peel back the ability for you and I to vote, that is an issue. So I do what I can to serve the community. I am transparent, I am open, I'm accessible. And I believe in putting people first. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so I am here to serve uh, for my second term in the Senate. And it is an honor to be here to share my qualifications and abilities with you today. Thank you so much. Good evening. I am Carolyn Thompson, and I have the honor and pleasure of serving you on the North Carolina Court of Appeals. It is, in fact, the second highest court that we have in the state. It's right under the Supreme Court, and 90% of the cases that come from your lower courts, your district courts, your magistrate courts, your superior court, they are handled on appeal with the Court of Appeals judges. There are 15 judges. We sit in panels of three, and I can tell you that since my appointment by the governor in September of last year, I've already authored over 60 opinions. We get approximately 15 cases every two weeks. They are records from the lower courts, and I always tell people when I try to explain what I do as a judge in the Court of Appeals, the most powerful words you can say when you feel like you've not had a fair day in court or the court simply just got it wrong, those two words are, I appeal. 
and then it will come up to the Court of Appeals where I sit. 27 years before I got to this place, I was a trial attorney in family law cases. I protected women of domestic violence. I was also a DSS attorney, protecting children from abuse, neglected dependency, and non-support. Also under that umbrella felt um, the issue of mental health and elder abuse. 13 years after practicing law, I ran for the seat and became a district court judge in my district, which is the ninth judicial district up in Vance, Granville, Franklin, Warren, Person County areas. Stayed on the district court bench for about 10 years, and then the governor appointed me as the first woman to, to serve as a superior court judge in the area. I've also been a deputy commissioner, which presides over cases involving workers' comp cases. And so on the Court of Appeals, I am, I am offering to the community the fact that I'm already doing the work, I'm already there doing the hard work, I am the only candidate for C-12 with actual judicial and trial experience. We've got too many serious issues coming to the Court of Appeals, as you've seen in the last couple of weeks, where the Court of Appeals made some significant rulings that impact the entire state, and you can't be um, coming in with a learning curve. I'm asking you for your support going forward. And now that I know I have 15 seconds left, let me let you just, oh, she said zero. I was <laughs> like this. Hi, my name is Alex Pasco. I'm running for the North Carolina State Senate District 5, which encompasses all of Hay County and all of Edgecombe County. Uh, much like uh, Sheriff Manning, I first came to Greenville um, when I attended East Carolina University. I graduated there in 2014 with my bachelor's degree in criminal, criminal justice. I left there, went back to my uh, hometown of Raleigh, where I obtained my law degree from Campbell University there in 2017. I worked in private practice there for a year, uh, and then I, I decided to come serve uh, at the Pitt County Public Defender's Office, where I've been assistant public defender for the last six years. Uh, I'm a unique candidate in, in the sense that um, I'm a millennial public defender Republican, um, and people kind of look at me kind of funny, um, and, and, and they don't understand how those two things um, jive, but I'll point out that I'm the only lawyer uh, that's kind of mentioned in the Constitution. But my time in the public defender's office gives me a unique perspective. I'm able to interact with folks uh, that um, most people in everyday life don't come across. I meet everyone um, from those that are struggling the, the most among us, um, all the way to you know the college kid who, who, who just made a decision. But in my time there, I've been able to see um, some profound issues that have persistently gone unaddressed in the General Assembly, um, particularly with mental health care. Our, our jails have become de facto um, mental health care facilities. And in fact, sometimes I had a client, uh, had a client here uh, recently where they took him out of the mental health facility uh, for breaking the computer and prosecuted him criminally and sent him to the Pitt County Jail. That's got to stop. I've got 30 seconds left, so I'm uh, 33 years old. I'm not married, um, but if I don't get married uh, soon, either she's going to kill me or my mom is. She wants grandchildren yesterday. But I've got the time and energy to put in this race, and I can be the change that, that we've been needing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Candace. That was, that was really, really well, very helpful and necessary, so we appreciate that. We're now going to start with some questions, all right? And uh, I'm going to start with uh, our soil and water candidate and ask the question, Miriam, Miriam um, communities of color and low-income communities experience outsized burdens of climate changes. How will you support our community's voice and decisions that the Pitt County Soil and, order, soil and Water Conservation District makes? Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the Well, definitely, as far as climate change, communities of color are <coughs> affected more often by the adverse effects of things like flooding, um, heat waves, uh, wildfires, putting smoke in the air and such. The, um, the role of the Soil and Water Commission is to try to mitigate flooding by uh, wise use of farming practices by appropriate placement of ditches and other drainage situations. Also by uh, preserving wetlands, which are really important to soak up flood water, to slow its flow towards, towards rivers and streams, and also uh, to clean up waterways so there aren't 
blockages that are going to back up into people's yards and houses and, and septic systems. From my understanding of what the board does, anybody can consult, consult with them if they have a problem and they will come out and, and give technical advice about the best way to address some of these problems. And I'm surprised at all the people I talk to who have used the Soil and Water Commission because it's one of those agencies you don't hear much about. They don't get a lot of press, but I believe that we are open to hear from anyone who has a concern and that it, it should be addressed, looked into. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Swinker. We're going to move now to our two candidates for the um, for General Assembly. And um, one of our questions um, is, and um, Senator Smith, you started answering this, so um, I'm going to start with, you, uh, with Alex here. What is your stance on school vouchers? So I guess I'm a product of public schools myself. K all the way through East Carolina, first private school I ever went to um, was Campbell uh, uh, for law school. Um, I don't particularly care how the kids get educated. I just want them educated. I'm perfectly willing to accept that there's not a one-size-fits-all solution uh, for, for everyone. I certainly am sympathetic to if you are a low-income parent and you want to send your kid to private school, you shouldn't be deprived of private school education just because you're poor. However, I don't think that we should be uh, subsidizing uh, C-suite executives, uh, private school kids' tuition with public dollars. Um, you know, we've had $500 million, um, that uh, was just allocated in the General Assembly. I believe uh, the state senate took that up um, on Monday. I just don't think that was the wisest use of taxpayer dollars. I mean, we're, the, I believe, uh, number 10 in the country in worst teacher pay. I think there was uh, over, uh, what was it, uh, 6,000 public school um, Vacancies, uh, 60,000 students went the first day um, without a teacher on the first day. So we have 3,000 teacher uh, vacancies, and one in nine teachers left the public school system last year. That is a crisis. It's an absolute crisis. Um, and while I don't oppose necessarily some voucher funds for super low-income kids, that was not the wisest use of taxpayer dollars. We've got to fix our public school systems. People are running from them, and we've got to fix them. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Now we're going to go to Senator um, Smith. Same question. What is your stance on school vouchers? You want to ex uh, expound on what you started earlier. Um, thank you for the question. I uh, have been fighting because I think it's welfare for the rich. Um, when you fight so much against social ills and issues and assistance that's being offered to those who need it, and then you turn around and flip it and then provide it for yourself, that is an issue. Um, when you decide not to fund Leandro, that $1.7 billion that could make sure that we're taking care of our public schools, our kids that have what they need, our buildings won't be in disrepair, our teachers can get the raises that they need, but you decide not to do that, but you decide to fund the private schools for the wealthiest of the wealthy and not provide transportation. And that's the thing that many people don't know. The opportunity scholarships have been there, and they say they're for low income, but they never provided transportation, so the parents couldn't get back and forth. And so now they reverse the entire system so that those who don't need it um, can get it. What people don't know, there's been about 1,800 people um, who applied for those scholarships, new applications. There were like 470-something that were reoccurring, and that's in Pitt County. That lets you know, a lot of people said, let me just take advantage of those funds because they're there. I think it's unfortunate, and the fight is not over. It may have happened now, but we're going to continue. We're going to go to court. And we're going to keep fighting because our children are our future. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Smith. I have two, uh, two, I have one more question for the both of you. Um, and so this has already been talked about briefly tonight, and that is uh, women's reproductive rights. And so if you could tell us your perspective and where you stand related to women's reproductive rights. We'll start with you, Senator Smith. Thank you for that question. Um, as a woman, it is very insulting to sit in a room full of white, older men, and they decide to tell me what I can do with my body. I um, sometimes feel very sad 
for my peers on the opposite side of the aisle that are women because I feel like they are put in a position where they have no choice. What many people do not know is that when it's said from Republican leadership that you got to do it, then they have to put themselves in that position to do it or they'll be kind of cut out of doing the things they need to do to represent their people. So we fought and we fought and we fought because that should not happen for any woman. And we had to fight because they said we don't care if it's incest. We don't care if it's um, a problem with the baby and the, the woman could die. We just don't want it. And I think that that's a shame that they're making decisions and taking the doctors out of assisting because we ask a lot of the doctors, is this stuff true? When you start saying things like babies being aborted at nine months, that's not aborting a baby at nine months. That's a lie, number one. But then that's killing someone. And doctors have told me that has not happened. It does not happen. So we're going to continue to fight because to have a precedent that was there for 50 years to be overturned, that lets you know that once you stack your side, then you decide now we're going to flip the dominoes over just because of power and not because of care. And so I think it's an issue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to uh, Claire for the same question. Your stance on women's reproductive rights. There we go. Okay. Let's make sure it works. Um, you know, no matter our race, our gender, our zip code, whether and when to start a family is one of the most consequential decisions you can make. I have three children. I have been pregnant five times. Pregnancy is unpredictable. Someone you love may struggle with a pregnancy. Someone you love may need an abortion. And if the GOP supermajority remains, North Carolina will have a full abortion ban. They will continue to pass laws that destroy our freedoms undermine our rights, and endanger our futures. They make decisions that force us to struggle to make ends meet, to care for our families, and then shame and blame us for the hardships they create. And while we're busy fighting for our most basic personal freedoms, they hand the money they take from our health care, from our schools, from our children's future to their corporate donors. When we vote, we make the future and we ensure that any of us can get the care that we require. Thank you, Claire. We're going to move now yes. um, to Representative Adam Graham. So nerve. They got a nerve. <laughs> when I went to my doctor, I, I, as she said, I, I have two children, but I had two miscarriages. When I went to the doctor, I, did, I saw a seat in there for myself, my doctor, my husband. I didn't see one in there for the politician. <laughs> they can't tell me what to do. They can't tell us what to do. But it's easy for you to sit back and for them to sit back and just make decisions because of a friend or one or two people give them an idea and say, this is what I want to see happen. And how dare they? How dare they tell us what to do with our bodies? It's not our right. It's between you, God, your spouse, and the doctor. That decision on what you have to do. My colleague that sat with, sit with me in the house, she stood up and told her story and said why she and her husband had to make that decision to have an abortion. Not that she wanted to, but she didn't have a choice. So when you start going into people's lives and trying to run their household, then there's a problem. So, and when my granddaughter daughters, but my oldest one always, how, mama, why are they trying to tell me what to do? And I'm just 13, so that means I won't have any say if things don't change. I said, that's why we're going to flip the, we're going to flip the script. we got to get things done. we got to get things changed. And we got to bring back as as our, said bring back, row wave. we got to bring it back. Thank you, Representative Brown. And now we'll go to Alex with the same question. Your stance on women's rights. I can promise you, if I'm elected and the Republicans hold a supermajority by one vote, I promise you there will not be a total abortion ban. There is not an appetite. There are some 
the reason we didn't have a heartbeat bill is because there were some uh, Republican senators in the state Senate that even the six-week ban would not be for, and if I'm elected, there will not be a total abortion ban. There will not be a six-week ban. And in fact, if we have the political will in the General Assembly, I would like to, for our state politics, to go back to the previous row standard, the, the viability standard. Um, as a general rule, I don't, I don't want medical doctors telling me how to practice law, and I don't want to tell medical doctors how to practice medicine. That's between the doctor and their patient. Um, I, I understand the, the global frustration. I understand that. But me, personally, I'm, I'm more accountable to you than I am the Republican Party. The fact of the matter is I'm running in a D-plus-7 district. I'm building a coalition of Democrats. I cannot win this race without Democrat support. I am more accountable to the Democrat Party here in Pitt County and Edgecombe County than I am to anybody in Raleigh. We talk about political donors, please look, look through my campaign finance reports. I have no corporations donating to me. Uh, I, I wish they would help buy some yard signs. Those things are, are expensive on a public defender salary. Uh, but I can promise you that that will not be the case if I'm elected. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go to a question for um, Judge Thompson, and then I'm going to come back to the two of you related uh, to uh, Representative Brown and Claire related to the uh, school vouchers question. But uh, Judge Thompson, can you please tell us about the situation with having, um, we know he's no longer running for President RFK, R. F. Kennedy, um, Robert F. Kennedy, but he's still on the North Carolina ballot, I believe. They removed it? They did it? Okay. The um, process was that he appealed in Superior Court from the Superior Court ruling where the Superior Court judge actually said, no, you've not, um, you've not met the requirements to come off the ballot. The time has passed. He appealed to the Superior Court. When you appeal from Superior Court, it goes up to the Court of Appeals. The opinion reads that it was unanimous by the Court of Appeals, but it was not. It was actually a three panel judge, as we talked about before. Three of the 15 judges ruled in his favor and said, yeah, well, it's, it would be too confusing for the voters, so allow his name to come off the, the ballot. Um, the Board of Elections then appealed up to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, being um, in the majority, um, ruled in his favor again and said, let him come off. Now the Board of Elections has to spend money to reprint, resend, um, and there's going to be a delay in getting that information out to the potential voters, especially those who are serving our country abroad. And there's been no extension for them to get their information in. Thank you, Judge Thompson. Appreciate that response. And now I'm going to go to uh, Representative Brown. Um, what is when you're talking about school vouchers? What is your stance there? I hate it. <laughs> I'm just I'm transparent. I'm, 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 you got to stop sugarcoating so much stuff. I hate it. I can't stand it. Um, it bothers me to know that schools are getting from our public school. It is our job now, and I can say as a legislator, to make sure that our public schools are funded. That And, and it's amazing how all the years in the past when I used to hear t uh, schools talking about the needs and, and what they're needing in, in our school system, but all of a sudden now they come up with all this money. And you know, and our school systems are still going lacking. And I right quick just brought the numbers, so because I, I, I'm getting old and I don't, I don't want to tell you this, but she said we got to be honest. And I'm gonna read real, real fast that it was a one-time allocate allocation of 248 million that was made for the um, for assistance, and then they an additional 215.46 million in recurring funds is appropriate for the scholar for the voucher for the 24-25 fiscal year. And this thing is going to still keep increasing the state financial commitment to the Opportunity Scholarship Grant Fund Reserve over the next eight years. So you see what I'm saying? This, this is this is paper I got when they gave us this. So you mean tell me, and that's why even in my the neighboring uh, uh, county, just at the high school I went to, had they, they took away the high school, turned it into a middle school, and now Robinsonville, I'm from Robinsonville, Mark County, and they are now sending the kids to Williamson, and now there's just one high school called Martin County High School. So that tells you about what those vouchers are doing to our our schools. Thank you, Representative Brown. And now, Claire? 
Um, as I said, I have three children who need to go through public school. I was um, educated in a public school as well as my husband. And anytime I'm in a room and someone says, who was educated in a public school, nearly every hand raises. The North Carolina um, Constitution says that all children deserve access to a quality and equitable public education. Now we need to fully fund their education, and we need to increase teacher pay. Uh, for years, certain politicians have denied some of our children the resources required for that education based on what they look like or where they live, and now they're fueling divisions between us and furthering that gap. The expansion of a universal voucher program is the demise of a public school system that not only educates our children, but truly cares for each and every child. As a legislator, I will vote against money being spent, siphoned from our public schools, and given to private education until all of our public schools have 100% of the needs met. By speaking up at school boards, contacting your elected officials, and voting to fully fund public education, we can make our schools a place where all of our children have the freedom to thrive and the freedom to reach their full potential. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. All right. We're now going to move to, and thank you for all of you who are running um, all of our candidates for the General Assembly for sharing your perspectives and your thoughts and, and some of the facts that you have. Greatly appreciate that. We're now going to move to um, our Board of Education. We're going to split this in half. We're going to do three, there are six of you. We're going to do three of you, then we're going to move to our county commissioners and then come back to our Board of Ed candidates. So um, the first question, um, starting with our city board member, uh, Bishop Tripp, what experience do you have, city board member, that uniquely qualifies you to serve on the Pitt County Board of Education? That question again. Sure. What ex excuse me. What experience do you have that uniquely qualifies you to serve on the Pitt County Board of Education. Um, I grew up in uh, Greene County, graduated from Greene Central Public Schools, and since I've been here in Pitt County, I have continued to be involved in the school <laughs> system before I ever ran for the Board of Education. It wasn't until the late Mary Williams, who was unable to continue to serve, that I got involved in running for the Board of Education, but I would always work with through the Sheriff's Office through the Police Department, working with our school systems to make sure that our children are in school. We started a program with the Sheriff's Office. We had a truancy officer who made sure that we were finding children that were not going to school. We had a successful program with that. And so I've always been involved with the school system, even though I was not serving on the board. So with my experience as an officer and working with the schools have prepared me for serving on the board. Thank you, sir. And now we're going to go to um, Jennifer. Same question. What are your experiences and how they qualify you um, to serve on the Pitt County Board of Ed? Well, I think having three kids in public school certainly um, lends some qualifications. Um, I also, like I said, am married to a teacher. So I uh, see it in the schools. I am an active in the PTA. I've been PTA president. I've also been my second year on the vice, as vice president. Um, I've planned fundraisers. I've been in the schools to help teachers. I read to my children's classrooms every year. Uh, I help students who need to be brought up to grade level. I help with teachers uh, in, in helping those students because we don't have enough resources for everybody to be helped. Um, I also do a lot of my work with research, has been in, in uh, collaboration with Pitt County Schools. Um, we, uh, some of the funding that I have from a research project uh, eight, nine years ago, funded uh, the start of some of the resiliency work here in Pitt County. <coughs> um, and uh, with Karen Harrington, the school systems leading that has really taken off uh, throughout uh, several of the schools around the county. Um, I 
do lots of presentations on emotional regulation and workshops to parents, to teachers, to school staff, honestly, anybody that will listen, because we are adults who are, do not know how to emotionally regulate in a healthy way, and we want kids and students to be able to do that, but they can't. They aren't taught that. Um, so a lot of what I do is helping schools help students learn how to do those things. Um, so I am all over the place, from work, from personal, from uh, being married to a teacher, and I think all those things together brings me a unique perspective to bring to the school board. Thank you very much, um, Jennifer. And now we're going to go to um, Justin with the same question. What are your experiences, and how do you, and how do they qualify you to serve on the Pitt County Board of Education? Uh, well, I'm going to be real honest with you. About the only experience I have is frustration. Um, I'm a loving parent, dedicated father. Uh, donate time to the community. I was a member of the Farm Central Booster Club, so I give time to the schools. I, I do everything for my kids. And after when COVID hit, things got frustrating. Um, everything we felt like we were saying was just going right over the top. And that's what started all this. Um, qualifications, that's all I got. I'll be honest with you. I have no experience in any of this. Um, I was pushed to run. Um, because I did donate so much time. I'm currently not on the Booster Club now because I couldn't dedicate time to that as well as this and my three other kids coming up through public schools. Uh, that being said, they've all gone through Farm Boy. Uh, my daughter graduated there. I graduated there. My other three kids will graduate there. So I want to see positive stuff happen for District 4 that has not been happening. I want to see parents being able to confidently come to a board member and tell them stuff and know that it's going to be listened and supplied to the board instead of just talking to deaf ears, as I said earlier. Um, other than that, like I said, I think it's just time to put our kids first and, and do what's right in public schools. Public schools play a predominantly big part in my life. I learned in public schools. I learned in public colleges. I've got a degree, um, so that doesn't mean anything for this. But uh, that is my experience and frustration, and that's what brought me to run for this board. Thank you very much, Justin. Really appreciate that. And now, uh, for the other three, please sit, uh, sit back, sit tight. I'm going to move now to our county commissioners and ask our county commissioners, um, what is one issue before the current county commission that you feel is important, and what is your stance and your perspective on it? We're going to start with um, our city commissioner. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier uh, about one current issue uh, they're talking about gun control. Someone mentioned that earlier as well. You know, it's a common sense approach to me. Uh, when you have people uh, firing the weapon indiscriminately across the county with no respect of the neighbor, well, that's the issue. That's, that bothers me. And so we are dealing with that now. Matter of fact, just a last board meeting, uh, I proposed to the commissioner, to the to, to the manager, county manager, to go back and and research how we can come up with a uh, recommendation uh, that will deal with this dilemma uh, and to make it safe for all of our county residents. And, and and this is very crucial, very dear to me because uh, I used to be a firearm instructor. I understand uh, the danger if you're using a firearm inappropriately, what would happen? I mean, people pointing guns at you. And uh, this trip can relate to this. I was, uh, my training was that you don't never pull a gun out unless you're planning to use it. So we have to, we have to be cognizant of the safe practice of uh, of firearms. Thank you very much, Commissioner McLaughlin. And now let's go to um, Mr. Manning, Mike Manning. Um, thank you. And while we're getting the question again, is what is one issue before the current county commission that you feel is important, and what is your stance? 
Well, one issue that has been before him, and it's not before him right at the moment, but if I'm elected, I will, because I've already talked about it. Brother McGallhorn about a few things. This is one of the wonderful things about being out in the community campaign is you hear about things that the community needs. And one of those is right up the road here. The town of Farmville needs a fire station. And they've been seeking some help from the county. And education is our number one priority as far as county government. But our second priority is public safety. And we're desperate to try to recruit volunteer firemen in across the county. You may have seen signs out around the county where they're looking for volunteer firemen. But I think maybe as a county government, we need to be more supportive of these volunteer fire departments. When they, because when they have these capital needs, they need to be met. And I was a volunteer fireman. I was an EMT. I was the captain of the rescue squad in my hometown before I moved to Pitt County. So I have a special appreciation for the work those people do. And I think that's just one thing that I would like to at least pursue with the board uh, to support that, that effort. Okay. Thank you very much. And Bob, um, same question. One issue before the current county mission commission or or something else, uh, a good one that you feel is important, and what is your stance related to it? This will be kind of a mix of both. Okay. Um, Pitt County is a vibrant and rapidly growing community. Um, it's gonna keep growing. We don't, as a county commission, I think, need to do a lot just to make it grow. What we need to be careful about and very serious about considering is the impact of the decisions that are made on the quality of life for people, all people in Pitt County and all parts of the county. What do we need to do to help this help ourselves become the kind of place we want to be? Now, there's a lot of things you could bring into that. Public schools, the county commission plays a big role in that, but this longer term view or vision of assessing the proposals that come before the county and thinking about how is that actually going to affect different groups of people in the county, different parts of the county, what impacts it can have, is something that I think is a constant and current issue with the county. One they talked about just last night, which I think is also a long term need in our county, was the pit area uh, Transfer, transportation system, the PATS program. And I think our county has outgrown our public transportation system. And there's way too many people in the county who have jobs they can't get to because they don't own a reliable car. Or they can't take a job they'd like to have because they live in Grifton, the job's in Greenville, and there's absolutely no way to get there except an Uber that's going to eat up $15 or bum and a ride from somebody you know. And that only works for so long. Thank you very much for sharing those two um, topics. And now we're going to go back to our three um, board of ed members, um, candidates. Uh, and so we're going to start with Ms. Lane. What experience do you have that uniquely qualifies you to serve on the Pitt County Board of Education? Um, as I mentioned, um, I worked, uh, like I said, 16 and a half years with the Pitt County Sheriff's Office. And um, I served as community programs coordinator, and I served in the division with the school resource officers. I was the only civilian in that division. So um, I got to work closely with the school resource officers, um, implementing uh, intervention and prevention programs to include um, working with them with the DARE program. Um, once upon a time, I was a, a facilitator for gang resistance education and training, implementing um, summer camps um, where we were to, we went across around the um, county um, offering summer activities for um, youth in the underserved areas. Um, partnered as a mediator, I've done mediations. Uh, there were a lot of times when there were different groups that were couldn't get along. Um, so partnered with the mediation center and um, would go into the schools and provide mediation to try to um, resolve the conflict between these groups. Um, also, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, bully prevention. Um, I, we started out um, in partnered with the Mediation Center with the Bullet Prevention Program. It started as a bullet prevention as a program for victims of bullying, but then it grew into a bully prevention activity, you know, monthly activity. Um, 
So, and most recently, I was tasked for the last two years uh, to implement an alternative to suspension program. So students, instead, when they were suspended from school, instead of going home, they would actually come into our building and receive academic instruction, um, restorative practice, talking circles, and things like that to prepare them to go back into the schools and be successful. So, okay. Thank you very much for that. And now we'll go to um, to Aaron. So as I said, uh, I was a Pitt County School teacher for 12 years. I, I truly believe that the professional that I am today was because of Pitt County Schools. The training and the time that they invested in me as a teacher allowed me to have the position that I now have today. And I'm grateful and thankful every day that I was given that opportunity to be with Pitt County Schools. I was also Pitt County Schools Teacher of the Year in 2016, 2017, uh, and I was the runner up for the region. And so I had an opportunity to work with the Pitt County Education Foundation, um, state stakeholders, and I also was one of thousands of teachers that marched to the Capitol in our beautiful red shirts one year to advocate for ourselves and our teachers' pay. So I feel like I have a wealth of experience specifically from that teacher's lens. Now in my position as a practicum supervisor, I still work every day with the admin and the teachers within our school buildings. In fact, I had a meeting right before this one with the school and their administration because we're going to be going in starting next week. So I am living and breathing in these hallways every week, so I still see what is going on for the students, for the staff, and for the teachers. Um, I'm also active on our PTA and PTO, now that my daughter's in middle school, so um, I'm on the board for both of those and volunteer my time whenever possible. And the uniqueness of my district is I'm the only district with two high schools from very diverse groups, uh, D.H. Connolly as well as Aiden Grifton. And so we're very active in our community through recreational sports and other festivals. Um, and so I have a lens to support all communities. Thank you, Erin. And I think I have one more. Amanda Klein. Amanda, tell us your, your experiences and how they qualify you to serve on the Pitt County Board of Education. So this is my first time running for office, and um, like a lot of the other candidates here, uh, I have children who are in the public school system. I am the product of the public school system in Pennsylvania where I got an excellent education, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I think what qualifies me for this job is uh, having been an educator for the last 17 years at ECU, uh, I have the opportunity to see the products of the Pitt County school system because so many of our students are former Pitt County public school students. And so I think I get a very good look at where we're succeeding and where we need some help. Um, beyond that, I think uh, what it takes to be, my understanding of what it takes to be a good member of the school board is one, being invested in your community and caring about helping not just the people at the top, but people at all levels. Um, and then beyond that, as, as my husband tells me, I'm a very good student. Uh, so what that means is uh, I do my reading, I study, um, and uh, that's part of being a professor is we're always learning new things. So I know whatever comes across uh, my desk, I'm going to read it, I'm gonna do my research, and another thing my husband tells me is I argue a lot and I'm very strong willed. Um, so I will advocate for what is best for our school district and I'll fight for um, what's best for everybody. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all very much for your answers. I think I've gotten everybody so far. And so what we're going to do now, thank you, Minister Hill. You Get with everybody. Okay. I appreciate that. And you all follow. So because of that, we now have, we have some time. And what we want to do now is get a couple questions from the audience. And then we'll come back to all of you to give you a one-minute closing. And then we'll do a wrap-up. So are there questions from the audience? I will walk to you with the microphone. I have Deacon Tilfair. Yes. Uh, Representative Smith, you mentioned Leandro. And I'd like for you to expand on that just, just a little bit, because I have heard some about it, but I just want you to expand on that. And we're yes. going to have the same, we're going to do the same time frame. 90. No worries, they will take it that long. Okay. <laughs> so because of what was shared before about the schools not being funded as they should be adequately, and the children taken care of with equity, um, there was a lawsuit that was filed. And in that lawsuit, um, it was won. 
that the money should be paid from the state to the public schools. So that was made years ago, um, but the Republicans refused to pay it. So they took it back to court under a Republican judge, and he said the same thing, it should be paid, but we refused to pay it. So we owe about $1.7 billion, and at one time we talked about breaking it up and paying it in um, increments. We still have not done that. But we just paid all that money to opportunity scholarships, though. So I'm just saying. So that's what Leandro is. We actually won a court case to make sure that our public schools are funded the way they should be and have not been, and we won't do it. And then we look at other people and talk about them being criminals and doing wrong, and we're going to make sure we hold people accountable. Oh, my goodness. That's what Leandro is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Smith. I've got one back here. Thank you. My question is for Judge Thompson. Um, it's, um, the judges' races are kind of uh, a little bit foreign for all of us. Um, they used to be nonpartisan. And so I wanted to ask you to expound on what you were saying about that unanimous decision of three judges when they're 15. How is the system really supposed to work? In 2014, the legislative branch decided to make judicial races partisan before then they were nonpartisan. In fact, it's the right way to do it because we don't get red files, we don't get blue files. On, on the current um, bench where we have 15 judges, there are 11 Republicans and four Democrats that are currently on the bench. So more than often, you're going to get panels of three in the majority than you will with um, maybe a combined um, setting, three judges. So when I said earlier, even though the opinion reads unanimous, it was actually a three-panel judge system that made that decision for the uh, coming up. And I'm glad that you brought up about judicial races, because everything that's talked about here tonight, what's unfair, what's unconstitutional, gets filtered through the courthouse. And oftentimes people show up at the ballots and they skip over the judges because you don't know who the judges are, and so if you don't ask the local lawyers and the preachers who, who are the judges, then you don't vote for judges and then we lose races like Sherry Beasley, 401 votes. So I'm grateful to be here to be to put a name and a face together because judges matter. The courthouse is a sleeping giant, y'all, mm -hmm. and they've gotten wind of that, and that's why we have to now file partisan. When I'm looking at folks' cases, I don't care about whether you're Republican or Democrat. These are people looking for answers, final conclusions to an answer that's been outstanding for a long time. And if we don't get the judges in the race in the room to start talking about these issues, then we're going to end up with a situation of a majority of one side in the bench, on the bench, and making decisions that impact all of us for generations to come. Thank you for the question. Sure. Thank you, Judge Thompson. Appreciate that. Time for another? And this is for um, Judge Kelvin also. Uh, this is in reference to the, the riot act, the riot law that was passed about um, what three, if it's more than three people yeah. in a group, then that's considered a, a riot. Uh, have that come across to the appellate court yet? Have you guys had to deal with that yet? It has not come up on appeal yet, but as a, again, any law, any constitutional question has to be filtered through the courthouse. And no one yet, just like the mask bill, saying that it's going to be illegal for you to walk around and protect yourself. All of those things at some point will come up to the courthouse. And if we don't have judges who are in tune and have their fingers on the pulse of what's really going on in the community, then this is the kind of stuff that will continue to go on and unchecked and unfiltered. And since I have a mic, I can run this way. Thank you, thank you, Judge. Yeah, this is for our town commissioners. Um, commissioners. Um, this is in reference to um, de uh, zoning and development and our environment. Our environment. Um, do we do we have um, do we have a effective necessary and effective zoning laws and criteria in place? to make sure that before a company comes in or development comes in, that our communities are going to be protected. Because we all know that usually when industry comes in, a 
whether they're roads built or bridges built, those those things are usually done in the community of brown and black people. We all know that. So my question is, do we have um, do uh, what is your do we have rules and laws and regulations in place to make sure that our communities are protected, land, water, soil, and air? Yes, we do. has a lot of capacity to in both recruiting businesses to come to the county and in deciding or negotiating the terms with them about who comes. Um, recently, the Compute North uh, business uh, was seeking to come in, and the long story short, the economic and social costs of that business coming in outweighed any broader benefits. Um, I think that um, as a commissioner, uh, I think that when new business is proposed to come in, I think we need to ask them serious and sort of point, you know, pointed questions about things like salary and pay structures. Um, if it, you know, if a job with like Bodie at Solar, um, the average pay will be in excess of the average wage in Pitt County, which is a good thing. Um, yet, as we all know, averages can hide huge disparities between the highest and the lowest. And I think we need to start routinely questioning businesses that want to come in, what their pay structure is, what proportion of jobs that they're going to provide are going to be minimum wage, or at least pay enough for someone uh, to live on. And I think things like that, using the tools that we have more proactively, can solve or at least improve some of the questions, the issues you're raising. All right. Thank you, Bob. All right. Do you have anything, Mac? You good? I'm good. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've got a question here. I wasn't sure about the voucher program. Do they? Did they allot money for that, or is it depending on how many people apply for it, they deduct it from the public school budget? They gave it to everybody who applied. Yeah. Does it affect public school budget, though? Yeah. yeah. So, because so, if it goes over here, it's coming out of that one. So, so let me let me help. Let me make sure I share with you that anytime you can make something sound different or better, you will, right? So if you're giving money that you were not given before to a private school, but you're not willing to give money to the public school that needs it, you can always say the money came from other places. So you can move that shell game if you want to. But we all know if we've been asking for the bulk of our children to go to public school just to make sure that they're taken care of with basic needs and equity, but you're not willing to fund that, you refuse to fund Leandro, but then all of a sudden you have all these reoccurring funds and you have all these additional funds for only 10 counties to fund those children, then guess what that is? That's where it comes from. And that's why people are so upset. And I said, if 
they had started funding Leandro, it would have been a lot harder for me to have something to say about the opportunity scholarships being opened up to those who may not need it. But I can't say that now because of how they've done it. So, uh, so is, is there legislative, legislative spending more money on education, putting all of it together, than if they hadn't done the opportunity scholarships? Yes. Okay. All right. That's what yes. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to ask any of our uh, Board of Ed candidates, I need mean, anyone want to respond to what you've heard related to the voucher situation? Yes, Bishop Tripp. You need what? the microphone? Somewhere? No, no, ma'am. I'll give it. Well, I, I think but we need it for our folks who are Thank you, sir. Can't believe you didn't want to mic. Amen. I got two of them. I do want to say that kids that leave uh, public school, pick kind of schools, and go to uh, private school that voucher follow them. If they change their mind and want to come back to public school, that money stays what? at private school. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you for that clarification. Do I have anything else from the audience? Okay, same thing with charter schools. Okay, great. I just have one. Sure, please. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, you might not know who I am. I'm from Hitchcock County. And so two of my representatives are here, uh, Judge Thompson and uh, Senator Smith. But I'm going to elaborate on the, um, more on the Leandro, because I was actually engaged back in the early 2000s when they started doing this. So right now the money is there. It's tied up. Can you speak to that? The only thing I can say is they refuse to pay it. Right. But That's it. But they got it. Well, if you look at how much money we just gave over to the Opportunity Scholarships, that lets you know that we got it. We start bragging about how much additional money we had for this last session, just in case people don't know. We had more people in that General Assembly than I've seen in a very long time. But they came because they were all asking for money because we kept bragging about how much more we had. And then once we did that, they came to see what we can get as the money. So when we you know, did the budget, and we were only able to fund the uh, tier one and some of tier two with opportunity scholarships. Someone made a promise that anybody who applied would get that money. So then, therefore, the reason why we it took us so long to pass a budget in the short session was because the House and the Senate Republicans were fighting with each other. The House side wanted to give teacher raises, but the Senate side Bill Berger did not want to. So we continue to be in and out and in and out. Maybe you meet, maybe you won't. It's a yo-yo. So you just kind of have to do whatever until they decide. And then they came up with something and they voted. And then that's where the money is gone. And so now it's an unfortunate situation. So I don't know if they're going to go back and say, well, this one is done. But maybe at the next session, maybe they'll talk about it again. But they do everything they can not to bring it up. And every time we introduce a law, they say no. They take it. But what I was talking about, elaborate on the money, mm -hmm. was because it was in somebody's hand to give it to them. And then somebody came back and they changed it how they did it. That's what I want you to elaborate on. But you can do it later. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Last question from the audience. Well, I have a question for, for Alexander. Um, because I wasn't clear, I was not clear on your position when it comes to um, women's reproductive rights. I wasn't, uh, I, I missed the clarity. So I, I need some clarity on it. So what is your position on it? As to? Okay, abortion. Um, I, I'm going to get back to the Roe standard. I don't think there's an appetite there. I'm certainly not, I'm not for moving to a heartbeat bill or a total abortion ban. In my view, that's out. If we were to get the votes, bipartisan votes, because that, that's what it would take to, to move it, to uh, move our state law back to the viability <clears throat> standard, which that would be the row, and then actually pass row, there's a case called a KCD Planned Parenthood that uh, they clarified row and said that at the viability mm -hmm. standard. That's where I would uh, put it back. Does that answer your question? The, vi the viability. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you'd like to elaborate on that. I believe that the, the standard of that uh, currently is 21 weeks. Mm -hmm. That, that was the standard before the General Assembly um, 
change the legislation last year in the long session. And now it's about 12 weeks? 12 weeks. 12 weeks. So right. with the, and then there's stuff past 12 weeks with certain exceptions, and it's a very, very long bill. But the short answer for the time we have here is 12. 12 weeks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Great, great discussion. Um, we're going to now give our, um, our candidates one minute to do your closing comments. And this time we're going to start on the front row. So go, Alex, you can go if you have it in your hand. <clears throat> to get anything done in the General Assembly, you've got to build a coalition. That is going to be my strength as an assistant public defender, practicing law. The best results I've got for my clients are the times that I've been able to form relationships with law enforcement, with district attorneys, uh, with judges. Um, there's some talk tonight. My opponent here says that you know people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. She was the third most absent senator in the state senate uh, last session in the long session. In fact, we talked about school vouchers. She missed the vote on school vouchers on Monday. Wasn't here. Didn't vote for it. Um, in Bethel, she was on the agenda when I was on the campaign trail. Came in 45 minutes late. Late again here tonight. Your demeanor and how you carry yourself show how much you care. I am running a bipartisan campaign. I need Democrat support. I need it in order to win. I'd be more accountable to you. You've heard my positions here tonight. I'm not a radical right wing uh, guy. I'm here running for East North Carolina because I live here and I care, and you can hold me accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Moving out to the judge. Oh, no. <laughs> judge, like, no. <laughs> I'm not getting in between that. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you so much again for allowing me to be here. I am just like you an everyday worker. So when you're in a situation and they play yo-yo with your life and they expect you to be able to be at every single vote, but they don't tell you when they're going to call the votes, I'm the breadwinner in my household. I am not a trust fund baby. So I have missed votes because I had to work just like the average person. But if you check everybody's record, people miss votes. When I first got in as a freshman, I was there all the time. And I kept saying, why are people not here? They said, people got to live. So I know you got to live and you got to work in order to eat. So that's what I do. The other part of it is when you are in the super minority, it doesn't matter what I vote, they're going to have it. They're going to win it and they're going to keep doing it. So for me not to feed my family because I'm just going to sit there and vote and it doesn't matter because we're in the super minority, it does not make sense. But when I am late, that's because I'm helping my people. Everybody knows it. That's no secret. If I was going to be on time all the time, I probably would help nobody, but just be here to sh for show and cameras. That ain't candy. You know how I roll. Thank you so much. They're not like us. God bless you. Thank you very much. We're going to the judge now. Thank you. Earlier when I mentioned that what I do affects generations, I've heard Leandro drop in this room several times. When he was a child, this case started, and now Leandro, believe it or not, it's like a 40-year-old attorney still fighting this issue. So when I tell you the court really matters and it affects generations, you heard it tonight and why it's important to elect judges who understand your value system, who understand what's at stake for our families, not just because it's a party affiliation, but because we have serious issues impacting this state and our kids and our my, my grandchildren. I'm asking for your support tonight because I'm already doing the work. As I've mentioned, I've written several opinions that impact school systems, commissioner's fights, local fights with um, your, your government officials. They're coming through the filter, through the lenses of the judges. So please don't forget to vote for the judges. I'm running as a team. We are calling ourselves the team. Thompson, Eldridge, Allison, because we didn't know to do with Allison's last name, R, and M for more. We have your values, we have your back, and I'm asking that you have ours in this election. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, teacher, I like that acronym. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for our timer. I really do appreciate it. And Dr. Hardy, um, you know, you could be doing anything on a Tuesday night, but you chose to be here and be an active, involved informed member of your community, and I, I appreciate that so much. Um, I am working to flip this seat. I have been knocking doors, talking to voters since December. Sometimes I am knocking doors, talking to voters with one to three children in tow. And what I say to voters 
is be informed and go to the State Board of Elections website and find your sample ballot. You can find the exact ballot that you will see when you go to the voting, the voting booth so that you know it's two pages and tell your friends. Because if I knock your friend's door, they might not answer. Maybe they're busy, they're not home. But if you talk to them, you are a trusted resource. They will listen to you and you can tell them you've been here and you've gotten informed about these issues and tell them how important it is to go vote. Um, you can find your sample ballot on the State Board of Elections website or at ClaireForNC.com. I've got a link to find your sample ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Yes, indeed, it was in the Oh, thank you, Lord, I've made it. <laughs> um, again, I am uh, serving, I am seeking re-election, I do have an opponent, but you know, um, I'm here as well just to keep so doing what I have to do and taking care of my constituents. I'm in Raleigh, I'm up there not to shine, I'm up there to grind. I'm up oh, there to right. do the work. And as, uh, as uh, myself and as the Senator Smith, we, we kind of throw this thing. But when you get to the ballot, flip it, don't skip it. Flip it, don't skip it. Share that with your friends because that's where our judges and everybody else come in at. Flip the ballot, don't skip it. And I'm just going to do what I keep doing. I'm accessible. I am transparent. And I believe in doing things that is right and not wrong. And up in Raleigh, you got to be careful because you can get caught up in that wrong, on the wrong train. So I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not up there to take, I'm not gonna be bullied, and I'm nobody's puppet. So I'm gonna, I'm up there to do what is right. So I ask you again with the ballot, please go vote, flip it, don't worry. Don't skip it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank Pastor Wayne and Pastor Hill to thank you for hosting on this great affair and the Democratic Committee for doing this. Now, I'm just going to tell you like it is. We have to stop playing with ourselves, mm -hmm. stop playing with our feelings. You know the candidates that are running. You know the concerns that you have. You know the people from the top of the, of, of the candidate list, President of the United States of America, that's running. And you know who have your best interests. Let's don't fool ourselves. It's time out playing games. You know, you know who's who's for you. You know who wants to protect your rights. We have to we have to utilize what God gave you, common sense. Use it and vote. Vote, vote your conscience and vote and vote your heart. Uh, you've heard candidates here, and uh, so so listen. Vote your heart. I'm not gonna tell you who to vote for, but I'm telling you I'm gonna vote for. I'm gonna vote for Kamala Harris. <laughs> Pass the mic. I appreciate it. Behind you. Oh, you know, guess God has one back here. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> Again, thanks to the organizers for making this happen. Um, I ran, I run, I'm running to improve the quality of life for all people in all parts of Pitt County. And to do that, I believe that as a county and as a county commission, I need to do at least three things. Fully support our K-12 public schools and community college, including its teachers, but also staff, bus drivers, nutrition workers, all the way down the line. We need to promote and rec recruit equitable and sustainable economic development into our county, attracting more good paying middle class jobs with a focus on our rural and underserved areas, underserved communities. And we need to ensure that all communities have in our county have knowledge of and access to equitable access to essential county services. So you don't really know me, but I'm asking you to trust me with your vote in November, and I'll spend the next four years earning that trust. Thank you. Thank you to the host church. Thank you to all of you folks for coming out. 
it's an honor to be up here on this stage with all these folks. Uh, and, and I really appreciate what they're doing to serve their, their county and their community. Uh, I just want to say that I feel very prepared to serve as county commissioner. Uh, throughout the, my 30 year career, and especially my 12 years as sheriff, I worked with other department heads. A lot of the folks that I worked with are still working with county government. So I have a working relationship with them. And uh, I just feel very comfortable and very prepared and ready to serve you on the county commission. And I just, in parting, I just want to say I'm just really proud that I'm joined up here on the stage with these two people to my left. One of my former chief deputies, and Desha, who's just a jewel when it comes to working with kids. So it's a pleasure to be with y'all. Thank you very much. Again, thank all of you for coming out tonight, and thank you for uh, listening to what we're sharing with you. We do want to say that I support Pitt County Schools 100%. This past year, a lot of our schools either met growth or exceeded. And that hasn't happened in a long time. All of our schools north of the river, this has not happened in a long time. All of our schools north of the river either met growth or exceeded growth. And so regardless of what anybody says about Pitt County Schools, Pitt County Schools are educating our children. And their producers are very productive uh, kids in our communities and very proud to be serving the uh, District 3. But we reach across the table, as some say, and look out for all the schools. My goal this year, when re-elected, not if, but when, number one, school safety, number two, parent and community engagement, reduction of school suspension, and can you, I, I don't have my glasses, <laughs> school accountability, because it is important that we hold our schools accountable. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all. I appreciate uh, the invitation this evening, and thank you all for the privilege of your time. Again, I, um, I've talked about my, my service in the community, and I am running for Board of Education because I, too, am a product of public schools. I believe in what, the school, what, you know, what Pitt County Schools has to offer to our students um, and would love to, to be a part of the continued growth. Um, again, I, I've done this work. It's, 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 I'm passionate about working with our students, working with our community, working with our families, to see them not just survive, but to see them thrive. And so that is what I will do is uh, Desha Lane, District 4. Thank you for your vote. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, while uh, Dr. Smith is getting ready to speak, I apologize. I got too excited about having the audience to participate, but I did not monitor the time roll. So we're going to go over about five or six minutes. Everybody sit tight, please. Sorry, Dr. Swinker. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Um, I'm, I'm anxious to work to improve our environment, the soil and water in particular, and I've come to realize that my role on the board will be not just as defined, but being an interface with community people. So I hope if people have questions or concerns that, that um, they will let me know and I can pass things on to, to the commission. And I am a write-in candidate. <laughs> I'm on the blue ballot. And um, my name is Marion Swinker. Thank you very much. All right. Very quickly, go ahead. Okay. Um, again, thank you all for coming out and hearing us talk. Um, one thing that did not come up tonight when we were talking about our schools, um, I was reminded of it when we talked about how we don't want legislators telling our doctors how to be doctors. Uh, same thing with our teachers. Um, that is another threat to our schools. Legislators telling us what our children are allowed to learn, changing history, telling them they can't learn about slavery, um, telling our students what they can and can't read, telling them that learning about different lifestyles is somehow wrong or dirty. Um, so. We don't want legislators, if, uh, when I'm on the school board, um, I'm going to advocate for teachers because they know best how to teach our students yeah. and uh, allowing our students to have access to all the great books that I grew up reading. I want them to be able to, to read those books as well. So 
that's something else that I'm going to fight for when I am on the school board, and I hope to be serving all these wonderful people as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to remind you again to make sure you turn over the ballot because, <laughs> um, because not only these, but everybody else up here is also on the back. And um, we, I'm at the top right, so that's positive. Um, but so make sure you do turn over the ballot. But I also think it's really important that you have an educated opinion about who you are uh, and what you do support. Oftentimes, and I see it in my students when I teach health policy, they have opinions, but they don't really know why they have those opinions. So please make sure that you look at all the candidates and then make sure that, that you educate yourself on important topics uh, and see which candidate actually supports you and what you, you believe. Uh, and public education is really vital that those uh, have, we have and continue to have access to for everybody in our community, and I mean all over Pitt County, not just in certain parts and to certain people. Uh, and Jennifer Matthews, uh, District 9 School Board candidate. Thank you. <laughs> So um, thank you to the audience for being here, but also thank you to all the candidates, because I feel like a much more informed voter, uh, which is very helpful and valuable. Um, I know I haven't spoken much on my platform, but I feel like we've spoken about it much. You know, teacher retention, particularly our 15-plus year teachers whose raise is basically zero for the last 15 years of their job, um, finding a way to provide a stipend to support them. Um, there's college and career readiness. We are not sending all of our children to college, and we have great programs for them to become ready for careers, but I think that can be expanded on and should be diversified quite a bit. Um, and then as well, just thinking about community representation. Um, the position right now that I am running for does not... Um, I feel like I have a very fresh and current lens of what's going on in our schools and what's going on in all of the schools in my district, not just a couple of the schools. And so I want to make sure that all of the schools that I represent are heard. I have a platform, but my community also has a request, and so I want to make sure I'm providing the request of my community. Thank you, and Justin. Well, I'm sorry y'all had to start with me and end with me. <laughs> but I do want to thank y'all for coming out. Y'all can be anywhere else with your families all that type of stuff. Uh, but what I will say is, you, you're not going to find anybody more passionate or is going to work hard for these kids than me. That little one right back there reminded me of why I did this. My youngest one is three years old, so I got 15 more years of being brought up in a public school system. So that's why I'm doing this. I want to keep quality local teachers in our quality public schools. I want to the retention rate, I want them to stay. I want them to teach my kids as we come up. I want to be there. I want to be dedicated. Um, as I said earlier, whether you vote for me, Justin Eastwood, District 4, or you vote for District Lane, I, I don't think we're going to go wrong either way. I think it's going to be a positive influence to the school board, and I just I appreciate all y'all coming out here, and make sure you vote, and like I said, put it on the back. Make sure you vote for each position and do your research on each candidate. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> All right. Let's give all the candidates one more round of applause. We thank you for sharing your perspectives and participating in spirit and health discussion. While we have the opportunity, while we have the opportunity to hear a range of ideas and solutions, and now I encourage you to reflect on what you've heard and what you've learned. Continue to do your own research and have conversations with friends, family, and neighbors. It is through these conversations, shared engagement, that we will inspire and transform electorally. Remember, folks, democracy is not a spectator sport. It requires all of us to play an active role, too. So to echo the words of the late, great Congressman John Lewis, quote, the vote is not, the vote is the most important nonviolent tool we have in our democracy. Use it wisely. Thank you all so very much again. Stay informed, stay involved, and most importantly, make your vote heard on and your voice heard on November 5th, 49 days away. Thank you all very much. And thank you again to our host, Amazing Grace, and to our pastor, Letitia Wayne, and minister, Destiny Hill. And when you come up, pastor, we would like for you to tell us how we can access the stream. All right. We're going to turn it over to Amy. We're just going to have a few announcements. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, voter registration deadline is Friday, October 11th. North Carolina, uh, or 
Does anybody here need to register to vote? Does anybody need us to help with that? We got we got some forms here if you need that. Uh, one stop early voting begins Thursday, October 17, runs through Saturday, November 7. And if you have your program here, you've got the early voting places there, right there for you to use. So we just want to bring to your attention that the Alice Keene is not an early voting site as it has been so many times. And the closest, I guess, locations for you all here are Boyd Lee Park and Winterville Community Room by Town Hall and Fire Station. Uh, you can request an absentee, ba absentee ballot from now until Tuesday, October 29. Absentee ballots for overseas military will be mailed beginning September 20 and civilians beginning September 24. Election day and the deadline to return absentee ballots is Tuesday, November 5th. Be sure to take your voter photo ID with there you to the polls. And once again, thank you for attending the program here. And we thank you for hosting us, the Amazing Grace Peoples, and live streaming forum and providing us a few refreshments back there if anybody needs anything. And our dear pastor, Leticia Wayne, will close us out with benediction. Uh, um, I sent Faith Bordeaux a link, um, and you can just share it. Um, she can just share the link with anyone who wants to look at the live stream from tonight. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of the candidates um, for coming out tonight. Thank you for, for the faith-based community. Can we give a round of applause to the faith-based community? because this is so needed, amen, in our city. Um, also, I just want to um, give a special thank you um, to my daughter, Minister Hill. Um, I just want to thank her because um, as I sat and I just hear, um, see all of the ones that's running for um, the Board of Education, um, and just to hear the questions about um, teachers. And I just thank God for my daughter because she's a sixth grade math teacher at EBA College. <laughs> and EBA Cop Middle School in Greenville, North Carolina. Um, and she just has a heart, amen, for the children. Um, I believe they did meet that quota. Yeah. <laughs> amen. So she is, she is just, I mean, I just love how she have a heart for our children. Amen. And she just, amen, just takes care of them and just love on them, not just their grades, but she love on them because a lot of our babies, they come from homes. They come from homes that, you know, are, you know, not that good, not, not so good of homes. And um, she takes the time to nurture them, to nurture them, to see why they come to school with attitudes to see what's going on, to pull them out in the home and talk to them. So I just thank God for her, amen, for being a teacher who has a heart for our babies. Amen. 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 I think that deserves a hand clap of applause. Amen. And again, um, again, thank you all. Um, I have adapted this saying um, over the last three months, and God gave it to me, and I thought it was just for um, our church. Um, but now I'm saying that this is a worldwide saying. And the saying that the Lord spoke in my heart was, I change, we change. I change, we change. And if we all do our part, amen, all of us can change, right? So if I change, we change. And if we take the necessary steps um, to make, like the faith-based community did here tonight, if we take the, ne the necessary steps um, to make change, um, make a change by giving opportunities for events like this, that this nation and our community will what? Change for the better. We are here because we desperate, desperately need change. And 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Guess what? We all have the power to make change before November 5th. Amen? Amen. Change these laws. Make sure everyone around us is registered to vote. Um, go talk to your neighbors. Make sure they are registered to vote. Make sure your family members, your aunts and your uncles and your cousins, make sure they are registered to vote. As a leader, I have to make sure that my members are registered to vote and the people of this community is registered to vote because I understand that when I change, 
we change. Change starts with, with you, and change starts with me. And when, when I change, we change, then we can become what a stronger nation together. And this, um, um, we are in our church for this month. We are in a sermon series entitled Stronger Together. Stronger Together. So we know that if we make the necessary steps, that we can be stronger, a stronger community, a stronger church family, stronger in our community. We can be stronger together. Amen? Amen. amen. So, amen. Here it is. Stronger together. Amen. So that's why we are all here tonight. Because we, no matter what, what's your nationality, no matter, amen, what's your background, we can be what? Stronger together. Amen. Amen. So standing all over the building, amen. Again, I just want to thank you for coming out and taking the time to come out, to come out tonight. Amen. And did you did you get all, everything that you needed, all the information that you needed? Amen. We're ready to go to the poll. We're ready for souls to the polls. All right. All right. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for time God spent here on this afternoon. We thank you for each and every candidate. Father, we thank you that you have not given us the, 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 the you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So Father, I thank you that you keep all of our candidates, God, in perfect health, oh God, as we get ready, God, to elect them uh, on November the 5th. Father, we thank you, oh God, right now that you cover their minds, you cover their bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that everywhere their feet shall triumph, God, you shall be in the midst. I thank you that everything their hands touch, God, it will prosper. Father, we thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, for every hand that's getting ready to touch a pen and sign on the dotted lines as we get ready to vote, oh God. Father, we thank you for doing something miraculous. We thank you for the ram in the bush, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for sending us a president, for sending us a commissioner, for sending people, God, in these offices, God, that care about the heart and the needs of the people. Father, we thank you on tonight for where you're taking us and where we're going. For God, you're taking us into new direction. We declare it and we decree it that new direction is on the horizon. New direction shall be our portion. New direction is here for us. And Father, we don't take nothing less, God. Bless our families. Bless our children, oh God. In the name of Jesus, as they go to school tomorrow, cover them like only you can, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we come against every demonic spirit, oh God. We come against every demonic force, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we break the back of the enemy right now. In the name of Jesus, we have the power and we have the authority to call those things that's not as though they were. So, Father, we thank you on tonight for who you you are. Father, we thank you on tonight for being a great and a mighty God. Father, we thank you on tonight for being strong and mighty. We thank you on tonight for coming to see about us on November the 5th, God. We know that, that it's all in your hands because we put it there. We put it all in your hands, oh God. And we thank you now. We give your name the praise and the glory and the honor as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, God. I pray now that you keep every animal in the woods, every car on that side of the road. Hold back the drunk driver, oh God, so that when we reach our destination, all things will be well. Father, we thank you for doing it now. Bless every teacher under the sound of my voice. We give your name the praise and the glory. Bless every pastor here in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for giving them provision for the vision. We give you praise and we give you glory now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
refresh was in the cookie chips. Refresh was in the bag. Get your don't get your refresh. Go get some refresh. You need some refresh. 